that call um, really did damage to my my reputation. Um, I am very fortunate that no one was uh, injured or killed because of that call. But what it did kill was my professional reputation. By the time I got back out of that valley, the guys were like, get rid of that guy. Um, they were calling me Rambo Red, which that is not a compliment. You know, for those who think Rambo is really cool, it's a cool movie. It doesn't apply in the military. It's kind of what we talked about before. There's no room for individualism, especially a leader who is um, making decisions based on his own glory. And that was, I, I saw, I wanted to get in the fight and I saw an opportunity and I took it. And I am very fortunate that no one was killed because of my decision making. So uh-huh. that, that started a whole new journey um, because there were guys who said, kick that guy out. And, um, and it was the lowest point I've ever hit in my life. I went and had to stand in front of my commanding officer and explain my, op- my actions. And I'll never forget, he, he, there were guys in that room that were like, get rid of this guy. He's going to get people killed. And, um, and my commanding officer told me to go back to my room and he would let me know the next morning uh, what his decision was. And I went back to my room and, uh, and I almost killed myself. I put a gun in my mouth and I started to pull the trigger. Um, but fortunately, I think God intervened. I looked, I, I just, right about the time I did, I looked across um, at the desk and there was a picture of my wife and kids. And, you know, just this voice was like, what are you doing? You know, what are you doing? What, what, what impact are you going to leave behind on them? And uh, I remember I, I put my gun away. I went and sought out special operations chaplain and talked to him. We talked a lot and he said, no matter what happens, you know, if they take your trident or if they kick you out, then, you know, you've got to figure out what the path forward is. But never forget, for every the end moment in your life, there becomes a new beginning. It's up to you what you do with that new beginning. This is a big part of what I talk on. It's a part of uh, my TED talk that I talk on. It's a part of what I speak on. And he was absolutely right. And thankfully, you know, credit to my commanding officer who did not kick me out, even though he he absolutely could have. As a matter of fact, I'm actually surprised he didn't. I mean, here's a guy who's grieving from the loss of 11 teammates only a couple months earlier. He didn't get to go home. He didn't get to go to the memorial ceremony. We had to stay and continue the mission. So, and now he's got this knucklehead ensign who's making bad calls. I mean, I think it would have been super easy for him to say, I don't have time to deal with this, nor do I, nor do I have the emotional capacity to deal with this, but he didn't. He said, you know what, Red, you, you've done some good things. I believe in you. I'm going to give you a second chance. And he, he did. I mean, there was some, uh, there was some punishment that came along with it. They, uh, any awards I was supposed to get, they retracted. Um, I had to sign an, an unofficial letter of reprimand that was held in the commanding officer's safe. And if I had, uh, if I had messed up again, that letter would have gone into my permanent officer record, which would have ended my career. And uh, and I got sent to U.S. Army Ranger School, which mm-hmm. um, is probably one of the best things that could have happened to me. I mean, it's pretty cool. I mean, to learn how to be a ranger and get, develop all those skills too. But you emerged out of that with a whole new set of leadership skills. I did. Uh, ranger School... Uh, I'd love to tell people that when I walked out of the office in Afghanistan after getting that second chance, I was immediately like, yes, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, recreate myself. But, you know, sometimes in this life, our new beginnings take time. And, mm-hmm. uh, and, you know, I talk about this victim mindset. I, I had a little bit of the victim mindset. I, I was seeing myself as a victim that the guys threw me under the bus and I hadn't come to grips yet with, you know, the only person that put himself there was me, my poor decision making and, and really selfishly viewing, looking more at myself and not outward at the, at the team and the mission and the impacts of that. And thankfully, it was at Ranger School that I really started to figure that out. Um, you know, kind of a, a interesting side note in Ranger School. Um <laughs> I screwed up. I failed to land that test. And SEALs are a little bit of an anomaly. We don't go through Ranger School that often. And, you know, there's that great professional rivalry between the Army and the Navy. And yeah. um, and a lot of the Rangers, I don't think, liked me very much. So they, they let me know it and gave me a lot of uh, grief about being there. 
And when I failed to land nav course, man, they laid into me. They, I'm sorry, land navigation. This is um, orienting with a compass to figure out where you're going in the woods, in the dark, and all that. And um, and the ranger school land nav course is pretty long. You start in the middle of the night. And I had taught land nav. So once again, ego and arrogance. I thought, I'll crush this course. And I didn't. I failed it. I missed a point. Um, and the instructors were totally heckling me. And in the moment I allowed my emotions to get the best of me. And I basically told those instructors what I thought of them. And they said, are you quitting? And I said, yeah, I'm out of here. Um, it's the only thing I've ever quit in my life. Um, and, um, so I had to go meet with the Ranger Colonel and, uh, and the Ranger Colonel listened and he said, I think you should talk to one of your SEAL teammates. And I'll be honest, I was utterly ashamed and embarrassed and I was like, I don't want to talk to anyone. You know, I just want to crawl under a rock. And like, I guess this is the end of my military career. And he said, hey, I'm friends with a, uh, the, the guy's name is Colonel. He was Colonel K.K. Chin back then. He retired a two-star general. And I had become friends with him because he really, amazing guy, amazing leader. He saved my career. And he ended up calling one of our most respected uh, SEAL leaders who happened to be a mentor of mine who had helped me get commissioned. And he put me on the phone with him. And I remember telling him this whole story, how, you know, I ended up there. And he said, Red, I, I know all about what happened with you. Did you ever think that you're, you're seeing this as punishment? He said, did you ever think you might learn something from this? And I said, no. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and, and then I told him, I said, but sir, no one's ever going to follow me again. I've made too many mistakes. I don't think I can recover from this. And, and he gave me the foundational level of everything that I teach in leadership now. He said, Red, people will follow you if you give them a reason to. That's it. That's all leadership is. He said, I don't care how bad you've messed up. It's human nature that if someone is on the winning team, if someone is leading a team, a community, a company to success, and they're a pretty good person, you know, despite any mistakes they made in their past, it's human nature. We're going to follow them. We want, we all want to be on the winning team. He said, so go back to Ranger School, crush it, come back and give the guys a reason to follow you. And uh, <laughs> I was wow. like, Roger that. I hung up the phone and I, I looked at the Ranger Colonel and I said, well, you put me back in my class. And he said, no, you quit. You get to go sit in Ranger School jail for a month and you'll class up with the next class. So for a month, I walked around Fort Benning picking up trash. Uh, and it was probably the best no. thing that ever could have happened to me because it finally humbled me and it gave me a lot of time to think about I was the problem. I was the problem. <laughs> and it was my lack of my own self-leadership, selfish leadership that put me there. And it really changed uh, everything. I created a new, you know, my three rules of leadership that I now teach. And, uh, and that enabled me to drive forward, graduate Ranger School, and slowly over the next couple of years, build back my credibility as a leader. If you're like me, you're growing more and more concerned about the future. The market is all over the place. Inflation is at its highest level in 40 years. Interest rates are skyrocketing. Market experts not only predicting a recession, but using scary terms like economic hurricane. If you want to protect your future, consider the precious metal dealer, American Hartford Gold. They can show you how to protect your savings and retirement accounts by diversifying your portfolio with physical gold and silver. All it takes to get started is a short phone call, and they will have physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or inside your IRA or 401k. And they keep it simple. They are the highest rated firm in the country with an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau and thousands of satisfied clients. And as an exclusive offer for my fans, if you call them right now, they're going to give you up to $1,500 of free silver and a free safe on qualifying orders. So don't wait, call now. Call 866-518-2955. That's 866-518-2955 or text Megan, that's M-E-G-Y-N, to 65532. Again, that's 866-518-2955 or text M-E-G-Y-N to 65532. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.